Try me another town. Hi is a odd soul, but they used to call me prodigal. Thought I could call the shot short sighted audibles. A strap shoes on my feet, got all my articles. Headed out of town anywhere, cause I gotta go. Try me some new places, hoping that they feel just right. My soul is tired. Hey, welcome to RV Nomad Life again. This is your host, Witness Me. Today, I'm going to talk about electricity and power, getting it from your battery system to your stuff. By the way, I'm here in Breckenridge, Colorado at the end of October. Beautiful, cold time of year just before uh, winter ski season starts. You can see some of the slopes up there. We just had an inch last night. It was beautiful. Really enjoyed it. If you have any experience with vans or RVs, you know that their electrical systems run off of 12-volt batteries just like the ones are very similar to the ones that you'd find in your car really they are boat batteries now these batteries do not provide the same type of electricity as the electricity you get from the wall sockets in your house there's, there's not going to be similar type of sockets that will plug in your normal device like your phone your blender your tv and get power from the batteries so the question is how do you do it there's two main ways the first one is to use a device called an inverter. The power coming from those batteries is 12 volt. That's one tenth of the voltage of the power coming from your normal grid system in your house. Now there's two advantages to that. The first is that it's safer to deal with. If you get shocked by a 12 volt system, it's not the end of the world. The second is that it's more efficient than 120 volts in most cases. The difference is your normal appliances aren't gonna work on a 12 volt draw. They're, they normally work on 120 volts. So what the inverter does is it takes that 12 volt power and it processes it and outputs it as 120 volt power. So you can draw electricity from your batteries and power any of your normal home devices. Here you can see mine. The back has the two cables that go to the batteries, positive and negative. My batteries are below the floor. The cables just tie it right into the terminal. Here's a fan for venting off heat and on the front you can see two normal walls 120 volt wall sockets along with an on off switch and a port for a remote control switch now the one disadvantage of using these devices is that they're not that efficient some are better than others but some can draw up to an amp of power just by itself without anything plugged into it while it's on now that's not a problem if you only want to turn it on for a short period of time, say to run your blender, which is the only thing I really use it for, or to charge your laptop for a little while. But if you're going to leave it on for an extended period of time, especially to, plug, to run something like a refrigerator that needs to run constantly, it's really not a good solution in terms of efficiency. You're going to lose quite a bit of power just from the box itself. They're not that efficient. But I do recommend you get one anyway because it's the one way you can power anything you would normally power at home in your camper or in your van. Here on Amazon you can see the one I use. I think right now it's not available. It's pretty good. It was like 120, 130 bucks when I got it. It's a 1000 watt rating with a 2000 watt peak rating. What that means is that the equipment is, is designed to handle up to a thousand watts of continuous power flowing through it or a peak of 2000. And the peak happens when you turn on something or there's a surge real quick. Like I've got a I've got a high powered blender and I can only when I start it there'll be a peak surge of energy that gets that motor running and then after that it runs at a steady level of energy I would say if you're gonna get an inverter get one with at least this rating of 1000 watts continuous 2000 peak but you can get some with much more definitely if you're running TVs or blenders or anything like that hair dryers anything that generates heat you will want that now the second way to get power off your 12 volt system is through directly through a 12 volt adapter. This is exactly what you would use in your car, in your truck. Here you can see the one in my truck. It's really handy and I love it. It splits off and gives you three further 12 volt ports as, along with four USB ports on them, two of which are the 2.1 amps, that, those are the fast charging for your phone, and two are one amp, those are going to be for your smaller devices. It's also got this really heavy cable that you know is going to last a long time and the best thing about it is that it's got an on off switch so i don't have to plug it in and unplug it every time i get out of my car thus saving the battery it's also got this really handy screen that's telling me the voltage coming off my car battery what that does is keep me from overdrawing and killing my car battery it'll even flash at me 
if the, the voltage coming off is too low. And that means that either the engine's off or you should turn off this thing before you drain your batteries. So how does this fit into your camper? Well, it's 12 volt just like your car electrical system. And if you're like my camper, you actually have a at least one outlet or socket in the camper that has the same shape and size as the 12 volt socket in your car. So you could take one of these, put it in the camper, power it directly off the batteries, and you can charge everything up to big size devices. So you can charge all of your personal stuff, your, your phone, your tablet, even a laptop if it was a low draw laptop, all that stuff you can power directly off this. And the advantage of using this small thing over the inverter is that it's gonna be a lot more efficient. You're not gonna waste as much electricity in the wiring. Okay, more electrical tips and other stuff coming up next time. Thanks a lot. Not bad. Not bad. Cooler from in there on this